Stand-up comedy is a context at which that becomes acceptable. To say all the horrible stuff you think all day long. <laughs> See, stand-up comedy flip-flops the real world. All of your faults are now your strengths. Things that, 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 that you dislike in the world are the things you want to talk about. You see, the way the things that criticisms of people have about you are now subject matters for comedy routines and jokes. You know, the problems in the world is now the fodder for your routines. It, you know, everything that was bad before is now something really positive for you if you're willing to accept it, buy into it, and join the dark side of the force. <laughs> you start... <laughs> But you have to first <clears throat> accept yourself as you really are. The real you, not that social facade. You're giving us a social facade. And by the way, in the real world, keep that fo social facade so you'll have friends. Yeah. <laughs> okay? <laughs> but in stand-up comedy, the closer I can get to that voice that you carry in the back of your head and you start to say it on stage, is when you're going to find yourself starting to get funnier and funnier and funnier and more original and more original and more original as a comedian because no one has that voice that you have. The challenge is for you to own it, first to own it privately and then to own it publicly and then to start putting it out there publicly. Yeah, are there a few things you're going to want to hold back? Yeah. <laughs> but the further you go, that's what Richard Pryor brought to stand-up comedy. That's where he changed stand-up comedy. He took stand-up comedy to an intimate level no one had ever gone before. Lenny Bruce got us to talk about what was on our minds. He talked, of course, he talked about politics and racism and sex and drugs and all those kinds of things. And nobody talked about that in the 50s, early 50s, he was talking about those things. Okay, Pryor came along and went, here's what's going on inside of my life, and here's how I messed up, and here's how I intimately see the world and react with the world. And he took us into a, his own heart attack. Okay, he took us into his drug addiction. That's amazing. Those are amazing routines. Because that's his internal voice externalized. And, it, and when I can get you to do that, and that's why I'm trying to build a safe place here for you, start to take those risks and start to say that stuff. <coughs> Stop editing all of that stuff. In the real world, you gotta keep it that way. You can't say all that stuff in the real world.